All right, today's topic is notes average value of a function. The average value of a function is actually a formula, and this formula comes from the mean value theorem for integrals. And you might be thinking, well, I recognize mean value theorem, and you're absolutely right. We have studied the mean value theorem in the past, but that wasn't for integrals. So if you remember, we had a big five theorem worksheet, and I had you fill in the first four if-then statements, because I told you at a later time we would be studying the fifth and final big theorem in calculus that we're expected to be aware of. Well, this is that time. The average value of a function comes from the mean value theorem for integrals. So this might be a good time for you to locate that worksheet and fill in that final spot down there at the bottom. Look in your textbook for the mean value theorem for integrals. Fill in the if-then statement. And if you want to hold up, we're going to be drawing a picture of that in just a second. And you can include that after we've done that here. But this is the fifth and final big, big theorem that we're expected to know in this course. And again, average value of a function comes from that theorem. All right, before we do get to that theorem, though, I do want to review the mean value theorem that we saw in the past. Okay. Never hurts to review that theorem. All right, so first of all, let's take a look at the mean value theorem. For this theorem, our if statement says, if we have a function that's continuous and differentiable, which this one is, it's continuous and differentiable, and we have a closed interval from A to B, this theorem guarantees that if those conditions are met, that we have an instantaneous rate of change that's equal to an average rate of change on the closed interval from A to B. All right, so just getting a real quick illustration of that. From A to B, the average rate of change would be the line that connects, the secant line that connects these two end, through these two endpoints. All right, so that's our average rate of change drawn by a secant line. It has some associated slope, secant slope we could call it. The mean value theorem guarantees that if we have a continuous differentiable curve on a closed interval that's somewhere between A and B called C, that some C value between A and B, we have a um, parallel tangent line to this secant line. So we can kind of see that maybe, well, it's pretty steep here, it kind of levels off, I don't know, maybe somewhere about right here. If I were to draw in the tangent line to the curve here, that tangent line is parallel to that secant line. Well, that means that the slope of this tangent line, the slope of the graph at this point, which we'll have, give an x-coordinate of c, the slope of the curve at this point is equal to the slope of the secant line. So the tangent slope equals the secant slope. And it occurs right here at this c value. So this point right here we can call c comma f of c. Okay, and uh, this point right here we can call a comma f of a. And right here we can call this point b comma f of b. And one more thing we want to pay attention to is, yeah, this point is c f of c, but what's the slope of the line? Well, the notation we use to represent that value is f prime at c. So that prime is important. So this is the, the review of the mean value theorem. <clears throat> Instantaneous rate of change equals... Um, the average rate of change. Two parallel lines here. Alright, so let's revisit what that formula looks like. So the slope of the tangent line is expressed with this notation. So that value is equal to delta y over delta x, okay, where we have f of b minus f of a over b minus a. A quick review of the mean value theorem. And one final thought here, and what I want to talk about is um, the units, the units of a rate of change. And I know you're very familiar with that, but remember when we're talking about a rate of change, we have fractional units. We take the y units, whatever they are on the y axis, 
and we divide by the x units, whatever they are, on the x-axis. So the units of the answer would be y units divided by x units. All right, well, let's look at the mean value theorem for integrals. Okay, hope you, hopefully you've looked this um, theorem up in our section 4.4 in our textbook. Um, perhaps you've noticed the if statement. The if statement just includes that the function has to be continuous. For this theorem, our function does not have to be differentiable. And you'll see that in the next video when you look at the examples. I'm going to go ahead and draw the function differentiable, though. Okay, I'm going to call this f of x. Um, if we have a continuous function on a closed interval a to b, that is part of the if theorem, part of the theorem. Okay. Okay, if we have these conditions and they're met and they're satisfied, what this theorem tells us, when you think about integrals, we're usually talking about space between a function and the x-axis. This is kind of an interesting situation here, this mean value theorem for integrals. Just kind of imagine, if you will, all of this area right here from the curve to the x-axis. It has some kind of number. I don't know what it is, but the way I have it drawn, the value of the integral that represents this region would be positive. So down here, I'm going to go ahead and, and tell you that we're going to begin discussing talking about integrals. So we're going to be talking about the integral from a to b of f of x dx. This is area. This is the area from A to B under the curve to the x-axis. This theorem guarantees that if we have a continuous function on a closed interval, that there's one rectangle that has a width from A to B. There's a rectangle that I can slip in here from A to B. It has a width B minus A. Okay, there's at least one rectangle that when I fill in okay, this width and give it some height, that the area in that rectangle I create is the same as the value of this integral. Um, that's hard for students to kind of comprehend. It's kind of abstract. So let's go ahead and get a, a picture of that. Okay, what I'm saying is you have to go from the beginning of the given interval to the end of the given interval from A to B. Consider that the bottom of your rectangle. Now let's start to build a rectangle. So at A, we're going to start traveling up. So I'm going to travel up on B, B over here the same amount. And I want you to just kind of imagine if I were to put a top on this rectangle. Well, this rectangle satisfies the condition that its width is B minus A. Now its height, I don't know what its height is. It's some Y value. But is the area in this rectangle going to be the same as the area all the way underneath the curve? So that's the question we're trying to, you know, answer. And... No, it's not. I mean, we can clearly see that this area right here, this rectangle, leaves out all this area right here under the curve. So it appears to me that I need to kind of raise the height of the rectangle, the top of the rectangle, if you will. All right, so if I were to kind of continue upward on both sides here, how far up do I go? Well, I don't know. It's an estimate. I do know that when I do put a top on this rectangle that has the width B minus A, that when I put a top on it, okay, I'm going to intersect F of X right here at that C value. So if I call this C, this is C F of C, which means coming back over here, this is F of C. I'm thinking, just thinking, that this extra space that's above the curve, outside of the curve, if you will, would make up for this excess area right here. I'm thinking these two kind of offset each other. Average value is the height that's necessary of the rectangle so that when you create that rectangle, you've got the same area in this rectangle as you do under the curve like this. 
So it has to match the area under the curve. It appears that this would uh, offset that right there. So I, I think I found the height of my rectangle. So the answer to this kind of problem is a, is a y value. Okay, so let's kind of put this all together. Mean value theorem for integrals. Well, we know the area can be found through this integral. Let's get an expression for the area in the rectangle. Well, rectangular area is base times height. So the base is the difference b minus a. And the height of the rectangle will be represented by the notation f of c. So this is the mean value theorem for integrals. Um, typically, we have this rearranged. You would see the formula with the f of c, just the sides traded here. So at this point right here, I've just rearranged the formula. Either of these would be considered your mean value theorem for integrals. If I talk about the average value of a function, the average value of a function is a y value. So that would have me take f of c and isolate it, divide both sides of this equation by b minus a. Instead of stacking and making a fraction here, I'm going to just multiply by 1 over b minus a. So the mean value theorem re results in a re rearrangement of us finding the average value, the, the, the height of the, the one rectangle that has the same area as the value of the integral. Okay, so this is the formula we're going to be working with in the next video. I think it's kind of neat if we just stop right here and make sure that, you know, this formula, which looks kind of scary, is um, actually going to work for us. And what I mean is, is this. Let's first of all remember that f of c is the height. You don't have to write this. I'm just reminding you, this is the height of the rectangle. Well, over here, this is 1 over b minus a. Okay, well, b minus a is the base of our rectangle. The whole integral here could be replaced with area, if you will. And if you think about it, if I rearrange this side and stack a fraction, isn't the area of a rectangle divided by its base equal to its height? We get the area through the value of the integral, we take that area and we divide it by, we're dividing by the base, which results in the height. Uh, one final thing is I want to talk about the units. What, what are typically the units of an average value question? Okay, well, we saw what the units were over here. Well, I want to, I want to kind of talk about what are the units of f of c. Here we're finding uh, y units over x units. Okay. Well, f of c is actually a y value. So if you know what the y, val uh, y units are because they're given to you, the units of the function, well, that's going to be the units of your answer. So oftentimes I ask you, indicate units of measure. If you're finding an average value question, well, you know, still the units they give you for the, uh, for the function, and you're good to go. Okay. But I do want to kind of look at the units with you real quick here. So the units. Okay, and let's work our way through this formula with units. So this is 1 over, these are x units, b minus a. Okay, let's look at the integral now. When we find the area under a curve, we're, we're multiplying x units times y units to get that area. So this is a x units times y units. Perform the calculations on the units. These will cancel resulting in just having y units. So like I said, if you're, if you're answering an uh, average value question, you know, and they're saying indicate units of measure and it's average value, well, you know, I'm sure at some point they had to either have labeled the graph, given you the y units, and that's just what you tack onto the answer. All right, so um, this is just kind of background about the formula and we'll be using the formula in the next video.